Hello. I like it. Hey, hey Dee. Hey, how are you doing? Hi. Hey, let's get let me get myself Hi. Lucas if adjusted here. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So Todd, you can, if you look at her, you'd be looking at the camera. All right. You can look at you over. We can see us over here, but we don't need to see us. We need to see you. <laughs> it's like it's like the Brady Bunch back in the old days. Remember everybody? <laughs> yeah. Uh, how are you doing? It's been a uh, while. Doing pretty well, I have to say. There's, you know, always so much going on that it's like, even when you're retired, it's like you can't get a break. That there's so many things going on. It's first off, you know, the computers that are supposed to make life so much easier. I know, but no, no, yes. or does it? I or does I it? Think, I don't think so. You know, I'm a technology no. guy here, though. No, no, so no, we're, we're, we're in separate chairs right now. Maybe next time. I just don't, I so, swear. So tell me, tell me about your technical woes. What is your technical problems? Why, why is the technology world betraying you? No, what I'm going to say is that the fact that they supposedly make life easier because you'll have less to do, because they're easy to get into and get out of and get something done. Right. The fact is, even when you're retired, you get so much junk that they say, you must do this. For everything, every doctor's appointment, every oh, yeah. appointment, every everything sends you a text right. or sends you an email and says, but first you must do this. <laughs> so you spend your entire day answering all these stupid things, answering all these texts, and answering all these emails. And I think to myself, where's the retirement? <laughs> you know, it just doesn't go away. <laughs> It really doesn't. Well, really well, 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 first of all, I do believe that, like, you know, we're still basically the same kind of wire the way we were 10,000 years ago. We really, the wiring for humans hasn't really changed that much. But what has changed, and Todd and I were just talking about this, like, if you think about what's changed in our lifetime, just mm -hmm. our lifetime, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we, when we were, when we, when I, uh, I'm not feeling like that, something like that, when I was, uh, back, 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 back in my day, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like yeah, that, yeah. Day. Yeah. something like that guy, but you know, you had like a telephone and a TV with three or four channels. We had black and white channels back in, when yeah. we were, eight, we were so, kids. So there is like an, there's like the, so technology sort of assumes that we're like multi-channel beings, right? That we've got like, maybe, you know, there's a lot of us there to do that. And it's sort of, but we're still pretty much single threaded. I mean, we're pretty much one thing at a time kind of beings. I mean, not entirely, but, you know, mm -hmm. kind of basically. But now we've got all these other stimuli that are coming at us. Yeah, exactly. So, But I, I, I would submit to you, that's not technology. That's more maybe capitalism, for lack of a better word. Technology yeah. may have facilitated it, but it's the environment, our culture, you know, a lot of other things that have kind of contributed to that. Technology may be the the facilitator but i don't know if it's the actual right right yeah totally and to be honest with you it just absolutely makes so much to do every day because i don't think any generation that is mine or older has ever had this much stuff they're supposed to do for their life that comes in over their computer it's just, I mean, you may as well. No, 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 nobody is. So here's the thing, though, that I sort of talk to somebody, uh, a lot of people I talk about is that I think a lot of times we see what, and I would be curious to what your brilliant brain thinks about this, because I've yeah. talked to a lot of my clients about this. They're like, oh, my God, this is making my life harder because they see yeah. what it adds to their life. All right. right. But what you, what's the invisible thing you don't see? You don't always see what it's taken away because it's not there. You don't see what it's. Maybe how it's taken, making something life, made life easier for you. Like, I'll give you an example. All right. We brought a client on this system called Microsoft Teams. All right. So on mm -hmm. Teams now, they've got this screen where they can, you know what I'm talking about? You've used Teams before. You know what I'm talking about? My husband, my husband used Teams. And yeah. So, you know, they can chat and all those things. Like, I've got, now I've got another thing to keep up with and all that. But what I pointed out to her is now on Teams before, but before they had like an old fashioned voicemail system where they had to listen to voicemail. Now with Teams, it's right on their screen in front of them. So they don't have to do that anymore. So I said, so I think this is more like about trade offs more than anything because yes. she was like, we have this stuff. That well, uh, that she was seeing how it was making her life harder without balancing how it would make her life easier. Here's how it makes harder. 
the expectation is that you'll work faster and you'll get back to them faster. And yet there's no change in the relationships you have with the other people. Right. The, so, yeah, so, that, so those are taking more time. That, and, that is cultural. But I think that's cultural. I think because they yeah. thought like, like, I feel like right, that, and that's our, you see why people are walking around holding their phone down, you know, because there's this sense like when I get a text, I have to answer it now. No, but here's the thing, you, don't you no, really no. don't have to. But we do. I mean, we all feel like we should because I think we're I think what happens is it's like you feel like you're in a conversation with that person. So if you feel like you don't answer, there's this deep oh. thing that I'm, am I being rude? Am I being no, and, yeah, and all that? And so I think that maybe we need to come up with some new etiquette. You know what? That's what you should write, Diane. There you go. There's your next big bestseller. Why don't you write a book and I'll help you with it? We'll all work together on it. The technology, the etiquette of the, in a technical age, you know, and, and like like little rules, like like it could be like who was the Emily? Was it Emily? Who was the Vanderbilt? Who was the lady who wrote the etiquette books? Was it Vanderbilt? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. definitely, yeah, yeah, and some others, and some others, some others, yeah. yeah. So maybe we need to come up with a new updated version of that 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 sort of outlines the technology etiquette. For a modern age, maybe, maybe, maybe you should be. Maybe there should be dies rules, uh, dies tech etiquette, you know. And um, I can help you with it, you know, because I'm a tech. I have I have a blog called the Biology of Technology where I write about this kind of stuff. Already. This is true. This is true. I guess my real point is that I spent enough time on my computers when I was working, writing papers for people and. <laughs> writing all this technical stuff and all this stuff at, you know, CEO level and, and spending all this time with my computer night and day. When I retired, I didn't want to do that anymore. I didn't want to be on the computer night and day. So let me ask you what, key, if you go with that, you know how to get personal. Oh yeah. What keeps you on the, I guess, setting up doctor's appointments now, is it? Because you have to go through the portal, right? I mean, right. And you have to, of course, with the doctor's appointments, they expect you every time to go through your personal information. Yeah. Every time. And so, so, and every doctor you go to, you have to fill out the same. Now, that, this, that is the function of. For them. Right, and that that is a function of the medical community. This is an argument not so much about technology, but about the medical community. No, no it's about the amount of time that it takes to right. do what they want you to do. That's my point. Right. And it comes in constantly. I'm, con You know, paying your utilities. Be sure to read this to make sure you understand the agreement. Okay. Be sure to do this to make sure you're covering these bases. Now, we know you're on file for payment, but you need to do this for us now. And right. it's relentless for all of the things you do in your life. And it's just like... Would it be easy, it be easy if we just went back to good old-fashioned checks? Maybe? You know, if I could just write a check... I don't like that. Stop and, you know, and put it in the mail, it would take me two minutes versus what they're asking me to do on computer. And there's just so much of it now. There is so much you have to do in retirement. It's constant because of the bill paying. And the thing is, retirement now costs you so much. Well, now I've heard this too. I think what you're talking about is retirement. Like my best friend just retired from 18. He took an early retirement. And he is busier now than he has ever been right. because he's got three teenage kids yeah, in high school. That might be part of it. But yeah. uh, and, yeah. and he was like, he was like joking. They're like, I don't and now they're teenagers. He goes, I don't know how people work and have teenagers. He was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he has help. He has like a, a I mean, he's got a little bit of money. He lives in Morningside. He's got like a, a lady that helps him with the housekeeping and stuff like that. So it's not like he's alone doing this, you know, and. Uh, and there's another, you know, there's another person that rents an apartment from the ba a basement apartment that helps out. So he's got a little community over there, but he's still like busier than ever. Do you think it's just, is it retirement that's the problem? Maybe we, maybe we need to redefine retirement. It, yes, I think you're right. We need to redefine retirement because I'm not seeing the, the I'm not seeing where. <laughs> you're not you feeling retired. <laughs> I'm not, well, I'm not seeing right where all these people with paying the bills and reading all the stuff that comes in and 
doing what everybody wants you to do, which they do. When you get there, you'll see what I'm saying. And I don't know how they're going to the pool and, and hanging out in the whirlpool. Oh, the retirement I, mean, I really don't know. There is so much. Now, I have to say, um, because Mark is still working, I think, you know, I've taken it on to do all of that. And I'm happy to do it because yeah. he's working. Why should he have to do all of that? Right. But, and maybe that's what's going on. Because when you look at women, for the most part, retired women, you know, they have someone else, a husband maybe, who is still taking care of all that. And then so the ladies can go to the pool. I don't know. I don't know. But it just seems to me there are things that I want to do that I can't get to. Like what? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Yeah. Tell, us, tell us what you want to do. Uh, for example, we talked about me giving Todd some material for this wonderful website he has. Well, I've got all these columns sitting on my desk that I could, you know, put together for him and send over and get the photos ready and all that. And they're sitting there. Oh, that's sweet. Every day. Yeah. I'm ready. I was saying, like, for 24, I want to work on it. It's been like over. You haven't done He's been a little, if it makes you feel any better, he's well, I he's, a, work he's on, on disability, but he's kind of behind on but it. But at the too. same time, my friend, oh, yeah, I would. <laughs> it's his block. The same thing. I met this guy. I write on mine. I write, I write almost every week. On I, think mine, I, I just got back from Rex. I went to um uh, to PCOM. I work with physical therapy students yeah. this weekend and last year, um, week and last year. And the thing is, I brought up my website, and it's about. It's, it's behind. I, I work with He's, physical therapy students, and they'd be a great if he. It, it, so if it makes you feel better, though. Work on that, about it, where, where easy living begins is basically is if life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But where easy that's living, what, where easy living begins has not always been so easy. But, for I, I, I don't want to make it limited <laughs> about NF and amputees. I want to make it about everything. But that's nice to yeah. you that you got some. That's nice. Yeah. Got some articles that you've been thinking about doing that well, for thank time. You so much. For so, but you. it makes you feel any better. He's kind of behind on his blog too. So yeah, but, I know it, that's because it it does take time to sit down. But I have, you know, in my career, written at least sixty or more articles about looking at life in a humorous way. Right, I know right, that's right, kind right. of your thing, right? right? That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything, like, like, yeah, everything that happens to you. And really looking at my entire life, even my childhood, and looking at how life throws such funny things at you, if you think about it. Well, like for if, me, was, I thought what adding for mine is like if having an F, having an F don't make it a bumpy road. Because oh, no. yeah, 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 people are bumpy. Yeah. Right, and part of that is your attitude. Right, mm -hmm. it, it is. That's what well is. I mean, it, it fucking sucks. I hate it, but we can, can we say we, that? Can we say the F word? word? It's, it's but you know, I was like, like but it's like everybody has something. And yes. You, oh and yes. Just, and again, yeah. as, and, and after I'll be sixty-two in January, and I'm still here. It sounds like the girl, little. It's like, it sounds like right now something you have got something that might be kind of triggered. Maybe there's been. I mean, it sounds like you sort of come here with like maybe you've had a bad, maybe not a bad week. I'm just saying it sounds like you've had a, a stack of things kind of leaning against you right now that maybe maybe have made so. Are, do you think this is, are you think you're going through like a normal cycle of this? Are you defining, here's the thing I kind of wonder, like when I go through stuff like this, I'm wondering, is is this a cycle or things going to slow down for you? Or do you just feel like you're stuck in the, the spin cycle and can't get out? Or you're stuck on the merry-go-round and you're like, boo, 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 and I can't get out. Is that kind of how you feel? Well, my issue is that, um, unfortunately, even though I have pushed my body to physically do, you know, minimum 300 days a year of exercise. And I mean of all kinds, you know, hiking and body work and walking of all kinds. I'm doing it because I love it. It's like such a part of me and, right. all oh, yeah. and, and I do that at least 300 days a year. Well, I've had some falls on the trail after rain and it's muddy, and I've had, you know, I fell in Milan when I broke my foot and all that, you know, on the second day of vacation, I fell. Oh, yeah. I ended up in the hospital in Milan, Italy. And anyway, so I have some serious body issues, and I'm, I'm having to go to the doctor for those, and I have to have neurosurgery 
All right. So, so how are you doing then? Does it? Because I was going to ask you that today. Because it was breast care, care, um, breast cancer awareness month last month, right? Was it? Oh, it? that's right. Yeah. And I was wondering how you were. I, we haven't talked about that in a while. And I was wondering how you were doing with that. You know, is that is that been okay? Has there been any? Is that is that that's not this is not related to that, is it? No, not at all. Not at all. The but you're doing okay with that. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, you have to get so many checkups checkups first every quarter. And then now I'm at six months, every six months. So they really keep an eye on you. And because I caught it so early, and I always tell women, if you're not doing your breast exam, you know, start. Because mm -hmm. I found it. And you found it yourself, right? I found it myself. Oh, wow. That's great. It yeah. was harder to get into a mammogram, believe it or not, than finding oh. the tumor. So, I'm the one who found it, and I found it at stage one. Yeah. Now, so I I, if I had waited till my mammogram time, because I always do every year the two, you know, the mammogram, and if I had waited till that time, who knows what it would have stage it would have been. Right. So because I was able to do, you know, take care of it at stage one, I only had to do surgery and radiation. So you did. So let me ask you a question. And I have a I have a <laughs> I have a reason for asking um, when you did radiation. It, did, was that how did that how did that do? Did they, did they shoot? A, how was that? How was your radiate? What, describe your radiation therapy to me. What, I mean, what was it? What, what did you go in for radiation therapy and what happened? What did they do? Well, most women, if they have more than stage one. Not only have to have the surgery, um, but also have, they go in for like two months every day for radiation and the radiation treatments go like that. They're quick. Basically the radiation goes around where the tumor was to do what they call the margins of where the tumor was. Keep it from and, spreading. Yeah, and I had clear margins. The only thing was I did have to have some lymph nodes taken out of under my arm. And to be honest, that was very uncomfortable. I bet. Uh, having I remember when you had to do that. I remember. I, I, then we, we, we talked about that, didn't we? Yeah. 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 So, yeah I remember but, we're really happy about yeah. that. Yeah. But because I caught it stage one, right. the radiation was very interesting. I could do what they called cyber knife radiation. I've and heard. that was a week of intense radiation. Each session was two hours. Wow. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm so glad I could do it. But let me tell you guys. The hard part was you could not even move a finger. Got to stay still. You had to lie there and you couldn't move at all. Not a finger, not a head shake, nothing. So I thought, I'm not going to be able to do this. So I, yes, asked I, didn't my, do that. I asked my doctor, I said, could you please give me Valium or something that's going to knock me out so I don't move? That seems fair. And they did. So I would just get on the table. I'd fall asleep for two hours. That sounds like what you want to do. Sounds like that's a good time to take a nap. Maybe take some yeah, sort of that's what I would do. You're probably going to be nervous. You'll be nervous because they're shooting radiation at your body. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, mean, I and they'd wake me up at the end of two hours to see, Diane, you're all done. You like, know. Oh, I was just finding myself. I'm just, it what? Was, Already? Yeah. <laughs> Can we yeah. go some and, more? <laughs> yeah. And the only side effects were you do feel kind of strange afterward. Mark took me to each one and drove me home. And you do feel a little weird. I won't say you don't. And you do have kind of a strange fatigue that you're off balance a little. But it was nothing major, you know. And I had to go, well, it was, I think, every day for a week was it. So oh. I really, you know, when I look back on breast cancer, I was so fortunate. And I was fortunate because uh, when I'm in the bathtub or the shower, I'm always checking myself. And right. you would not believe how many women don't do it. And I'm thinking, how simple is it to just grope yourself, you know? I mean, it's basically you're just you filling know. yourself up, right? I, I think we don't, yeah, we don't I, know. Breast, so, yeah. Mothers should teach their daughters how to do that. Yeah, it's exactly. a mother's responsibility, and they're too ashamed to do it. Yeah, I told my sister, I said, 
you have got to start doing this if you're not already doing it. I, after yeah, because it's your sister, right? right? It could be a in the family. Yeah. yeah, and I said, yeah, after I had my cancer, I said, if you get breast cancer, it'll kill me because I love you so much. And the last thing I want is for you to get breast cancer. Sure, of course. So, And I told her, please do your checks. Just fill yourself up every time you're in the shower, you know. I think you're in a, you're in a high school a date with a high school boy who's just... <laughs> You know what? Don, you Our know, girl, we don't judge. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and, and boy, boy friends can help too. I mean, why not? Yeah, is this a thing that why I, not? No, the, the, I their, their partners can help too. I know. You know, in fact, I had, I'll tell you this, I had a tumor. It was benign, and I was 18 years old. Wow. Oh, I, I, big, I had a big, you remember Steelies, the marbles and the Steelies, the big Steelies that you would play marbles with? I do. It might be too ancient for you, but mm -hmm. of the same age. Remember? Yeah, but it was big. It was a big, big tumor, big. And yeah, my boyfriend found it. Your I boyfriend found it. I never, I never told my parents that. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I he found. He found it. He found it. Let's see. If a, uh, maybe that's what. Maybe that's what they need to do with the high school boys. Maybe it's. Uh, I don't know. I'm just teach kidding. Them, yes, just, if you're gonna be um, in the back seat of a car, teach you them. Say, hey, what's going on here? Is this normal for a breast? I don't know. Yeah, I don't have exactly. what? You tell, know. You tell them like, exactly. did you have like? Oh yeah, every girl has one of those. Or yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. What are you, did you make you feel, feel like? Oh my God, you've never had felt one of those before. Well, you must have be a like a, must be a rookie or something. Shake them a little bit. <laughs> It's like, I feel a lot of breasts. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one happened to be benign. Yeah. And it was so big, but it was benign. My Did you parents, have a surgery? Mm -hmm. Yes, I had surgery. They removed it. And, you know, I was down for the count for a few days, more than a few days. But what happened um, to your boyfriend? Did he? Did he you know, you... surgeries back then were just so much more intense than yeah. they are now. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so when I found this one, I have to say I was very lucky because I found it just yeah. in time before it grew to a stage two. But the thing was big. It was big enough that there was no question. So you had a, a lump. I mean, there was no question. Right. Yeah. So, so did it come up pretty fast? I mean, did you like? Because it says I, it regularly. I think it did because yeah. I was doing this regularly, and right. it was just like, oh. All of a sudden, one day, you're like, wait, where, hello, where did that come from? Yeah. So one yeah. of the reasons why I ask is because I am now going to have to do some radiation therapy for my situation. Yes. So, yes. And I was kind of curious. I wanted to talk with someone who's gone through it. I can tell you right now that I will tell you, though, that you probably already know this, that guys, because, you know, I have prostate cancer, and we've talked about it. And yes. so guys, when it comes to that part of their body, we are huge babies, the biggest babies <laughs> in the world. <laughs> We are terrible. I totally own it, man. I totally own it. That we're women, y'all are just much more tour about it. Y'all handle this better. You know, oh, I've got a lump on my breast. And when you say breast, we're giggling and you're like, seriously, really? But I, and I have prostate cancer and all my friends are like, oh, do they have to la, 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 la. And I'm like, you know, they're yeah, giggling and do they have to do the, uh, and I'm like, but I'm going to have to, looks like probably here, because I had to have the, it looks like my, you know, it's been kind of, slow progressing cancer what they call active surveillance but it is now crossed over into yeah. the uh, risky zone uh, so they wanted me to do some form of treatment and so they but what they tell me now and you might find this interesting the the uh, radiologist i'm seeing says we have a new form of radiation uh, treatment external radiation they for a lot of times they used to do external and internal for prostate you know where they put the radioactive seeds in there right. and then they do the firing which it sounds like similar to what you went through where i'm going to have to sit still but he says we got this new machine now. I've heard, I've been reading about it. It it's just faster. You don't have to stay still as long. It's supposed to be more accurate. It's like they've. It, so it sounds like they've sort of created a a, a next generation, a 2.0 radiation gun yeah. where they're gonna yeah. fire right down there at me, boo, right down there in that area where every guy loves to be fired oh, radiation. Yes. At. Oh yes. Oh, so, but I was kind of curious about because I've talked to some other people how you felt afterward. It does sound like you had some sort of you you yeah. felt. No. Maybe felt a little off, but not not anything that no, was no real side effects. No, just a little fatigue and you feel a little kind of dizziness and definitely not like you're gonna drive a car. 
you know, that's the biggest. Oh, thing. that's good to know. I, I, I'm not here driving. Yeah, he can't drive. And my, my, my friend who I told you is retired, who I, you know, he said he could take me because, you know, I'm retired, but I'm like, yeah, but you're busy retired, like you, it sounds like. But, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, he could still do it. You know, I mean, still, you just right. put things aside and, and right. he needs to stay and wait while you're doing it. I don't know how you're they long. Say, it, okay. Yeah, they say it doesn't take long, but I'll have to go in like every day, five days a week for about six weeks or something. That's right. And, That's and it, right. But, but because, it's, because it's just crossed over into this risky zone, they say if you go ahead and do it now, you could probably do just external only. We used to never do this. We used to do We got to do internal and external. That was the protocol. Yeah changed it for people like you especially with this new technology said you're gonna have to sit still but not as still as you used to it sounds like it's it's uh, sort of a next gen or so it's just yeah. like it's gonna be firing in my prostate instead of my breast i guess i don't know yeah exactly <laughs> and you know um my husband has a friend and i'm actually surprised he called and told him because again like you say for men this is a big deal and the i don't babies, think yeah. many talk about it but we don't he, don't talk about it yeah yeah he called and said that he had to have radiation and um and he was having it internally as well so he did and, the seeds he did the seeds also yeah and it, what was really funny was the way what i was telling my one of my cancer specialists was yeah my husband's got a friend who has to have a you know prostate cancer surgery and i said I got to tell you, after Mark got off the phone and told me about the conversation, men sure talk about this cancer thing differently than women. <laughs> 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 you know, but he was talking about how the prep included him lying on his side and getting the measurements and they, oh, something going into a place that was very embarrassing and, you know, all of this stuff. And, of course, they were using all this terminology that only men use, you know. Yeah. And we have to, yeah, men have to speak in code. We can't talk about this stuff directly. We can't, we have to use code <laughs> words, you know. Women are okay talking about it. They're just like, yeah, blah, 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 vagina, breast. And men are like, you know, a little Jojo down there had to take a walk. <laughs> oh, just, uh, sure. you know. yeah. <laughs> We have yeah, to use code exactly. words. I don't know. Maybe we're wired that way. I don't know. I don't no, know. You are. You are because remember throughout history, that was the thing you wanted to protect. No matter right. what was happening to you. you right. And, and now they're going to fire radioactive radiation at it. I'm, I mean, I've been freaking out a little bit. You know, I'm not really a freak out kind of person. Yeah. Yeah. I've been a little, I've, I told I told my friend I was talking about told Tony said you know what I'm not really one of these people who has anxiety like I have you know, we know I know people you know people who have anxiety disorders and it's horrible what can happen to them I don't think I'm really one of those people neither no, one of he no. and I are uh, which was great we got our other things but that's just not one of them but I've actually had some anxiety about it you know but I think it's I think it's normal to have a I mean and here's the other thing. what if something goes wrong. This is this is a terrifying you're not, thing. You're not helping my anxiety. I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm just <joking. laughs> but with women, with women, it's will I lose a breast? Yeah, that's women it. are. That's what I said. Like you can probably talk about that be fine, but when you say that right, me, every male reaction to me, we're like, oh crap, you know what's gonna go yeah. wrong? But women are yeah. they're better at talking about the well. We need to talk about this. Well, what are we gonna do if this happens? What are we gonna do if this is gonna happen? I think y'all. I guess maybe because uh, I, I don't know if it's the men are from Mars, when are you know men, women are from Venus. If there's a certain wiring thing, or it's cultural, or some combination thereof. It's, I think it's a combination thereof because for women, our femininity is really wrapped up to right, right there, right. your breast. Yeah, so much so. Well, how did your uh, husband's friend do? Is he okay? Well, I you know here's the other thing. Because of the situation, it's the same thing. He's afraid to ask. Because once I'm again, afraid to ask, yeah. Once again, it deals with that party, that part mm -hmm. of the body. And you know, just as much as men have a hard time talking about it and thinking about it, he doesn't he doesn't feel comfortable asking. And yeah, I'm like, hey makes... honey, have you checked on him? Yeah, you yeah, know, that makes it. I totally, I just wondered, since he was so forthcoming about sharing with your husband, if he had gone back and shared, I would totally get that your husband would want to ask, because that would be kind of, I was also like a breaking male protocol, almost, it's unwritten code. Yeah, I don't know, I don't, but but you, um, but but I just wondered if he'd heard anything, if he's doing okay. Oh, 
Or because I can't call and ask him. So. <laughs> call and ask. Hey, <laughs> going down there. How's little Jojo doing down there? You're talking about? You know, whatever yeah, code name you guys are yeah. using. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know his wife. I don't really know. Because uh, as I say, can you his wife? You all two could call and talk about it like forever and be fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we'd have no problem. She, right. you, she and I would have no problem talking to you about. It. She'd tell me everything, right. and he, of course, would go, what? "What?" You know, but it's so funny because, like, I've talked with my best friend about it. I've talked with Todd about it, and you know, this is a real close circle. But like, I was at a group of small group of friends that I'm really good friends with, and you know, yeah. I, they knew I had prostate cancer, and I was like, "I have prostate cancer. Oh, I hope you're gonna be okay." Boom, we can't talk about this anymore. Stop. You know, how, how about that? <laughs> Hey, did you guys see that show? I mean, immediately you could tell because they were like, which is fine. I, it's just the way guys are, you know. We didn't want to. Yeah, oh, no, this is not a topic. Where with women, we can go on and on and on about it. Right. And on and on. Like so, my sister-in-law has a woman next door to her. I called and even talked to her about it. And she was more concerned about how she thinks her breasts cause the cancer she wants a doctor who will not only remove the cancer, but also take her breast off, and she can't find one. And I finally said to her, I said, look, it's not about all these things you want. You need to get this cancer out of your body. So quit looking for someone who's going to do what you think you want to do. So she, because she's so she feels like she's to have a complete mastectomy because of this. Is that yeah? And she, and the doctors are not going to do that unless they feel it's necessary. Right. Yeah. So, Cause, but cause she's, if, oh yeah. Yeah. No, this is what caused it. I just know this is what caused it. Well, if it's if it's not that way, it's not that way. And I just looked at her. I said, "What are you waiting for? Get the cancer out of your body." Then. Right. Then, if you want your boobs gone, then get them taken off. Well, she, that makes sense. You know, she hemmed and hawed about it for too long. And guess what? When they finally went in, it was stage four. Oh, no. Man. Is she okay? Well, she's had, she had chemo. Yeah. And, you chemo. know, and yeah. I think she did have the surgery she wanted because of, she blamed it all on that. And, I don't necessarily think that's the case at all. She's been getting yeah, some filling so, problems, yeah. You know, she spent all that time looking for someone who was going to take them both off, blaming that. And I kept telling her, just get the cancer out of your body and get over this. Just right. get it out. Get it out. Yeah, I'm kind of at that stage too. I totally get that now. I'm, I'm ready to. Well, I, now I don't like you know for a preview like me. You know we have several options. One of the things you can do is prostate removal, but right. I, I'm not that at that point. They're telling me that you can do that if you want to. They said that's an option, but at your risk level, it's not. You have these other options you can do too. Oh, that's so, great. So that's so I don't. But, but but I have another. So it's funny. I do have one other friend. I had a friend with this, and we ended up talking about it. And he was like, "Sound like your friend." He goes, "I just want to get it out of my body." So he went and did the whole prostate removal thing. Mm -hmm. And it, but it sounded like his cancer was a little more aggressive than mine. But he basically told me recently. He says, "Like I kind of might have." kind of might have a little regret about that kind of he was saying, like you should do your radiation because this right. is a bigger deal than you think and maybe your friend i don't know it sounds like she's had to go through a pretty big deal too it sounds like so. well it turned out to be a much bigger deal than yeah I realized and she had to definitely do chemo because with you know with stage four you got to do the whole works and it's not fun, but you have to do it. And, and you know, she may have a recurrence of her breast cancer. I might have a recurrence. That's why I was asking you, because I, I you know, wanted to make sure you were doing okay and everything as they do. Oh, yeah, and, and honestly, because I was stage one, and I had the radiation that took care of the margins, and there was no cancer in my margins to begin with when they did the surgery, no cancer in my lymph nodes, it meant that with the radiation, it added on the um, likelihood of me having cancer is only 7%. That's good. That's a good odds, you know? It yeah. It is, you know what, guys? I don't even think about it. Yeah, I that's... don't even think about it because I think that was a one-off. Yeah. And I now am one of those people that I just tell women, get, do your self-exam. And if you get cancer, 
take those steps because the doctors know what they're doing. And there are some, I had great doctors. I really did. And I still see them because I still have to stay on top of it. Yeah. Good, know. good. I'm glad you stay on top of it and all that. Now, I'll keep you posted too. The next time we chat, I may be on I the other side. That. So, I some radiation should be. I'm, I'm yeah. very, very like, uh, not really excited <laughs> about that. But... Oh, it's, it's, you're, it's a scary thing. There's yes, it's, you're shooting radioactive isotope beam what? right in the most private part of a male's body. <laughs> what could go wrong, man? I mean, that's where you want it. Yeah. <laughs> that's where every guy wants to have right. radiation. But, I have been reading. I'm a big fan of reading art magazine, and it's excellent. If you haven't read it, by the way, it is. I mean, for twelve dollars a year, you can be a member of ARP and their publication. Oh, AARP, AARP. Yeah, AARP. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. We're yeah, we're old enough to be in the club, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, I'm a, you know, they start their membership start at fifty. So, yeah. Yeah. And you can read so much health information. And I, they just had an article about the prostate and the things, you know, the diseases or the problems and all that. You would not believe how far they have come with doing this kind of thing. They oh, have come yeah. so they've, far. They've come that, off, yeah. Because yeah. it, it really is going to happen. I mean, most men are going to face it if you live long enough. It's been lived longer. Yeah. Prostate cancer, that's what they said. You have what every, I've actually, my doctor said, if you were at 70 years old right now and had the same diagnosis, I probably have to tell you just don't do anything. Even though yeah. even though you've jumped into the risky side of the equation, he said, you're probably going to, or he said, no, he said 75 or 80, because you're probably going to outlive it depending on other life factors or whatever. But um, but but I appreciate you um, you sharing with me a little about your race experience, because sure. I, yes, sure. guys are talking about it that much. And so yeah. I'm glad you're doing well with it and everything. So, but maybe, yeah, yeah. Maybe. And you know, one of the ways that I kept my perspective was by thinking about how it's not, believe it or not, it's not the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. And I told the doctors that are like, you're really handling this well. And I said, like, I have had much worse things happen yeah. to me. I watched two brothers die by the time I was 44, and then my parents died. When I same time, by the time I was 44, and I watched these family members whom I love dearly, I watched them die from horrible circumstances. And I said, to me, this is a walk in the park. Like right. cancer, schmancher, not that big of a deal. Yeah. yeah well, I'm I, like doing okay. Maybe that's a funny thing too. Is this, as we get to this station in life, we end up talking about this stuff more too because. Uh, I remember like me and my friends, even though we did people have cancer, I have another good friend who just broke his ankle, you know, he's in his fifties and other people, all of us. And so we end up, we were the other day, we we're joking like, now we're all talking about doctor's appointments and health stuff. You know, 20 years ago, yeah. we're talking about, what are you going to do this weekend? Yeah. Who are you going out yeah. with? Oh, it's a great day. You know, we didn't talk about it. So maybe, maybe this, this is a part of the, the, the circle yeah. of life. I don't know. Yeah, I think. And, and maybe yeah. that's what, maybe kind of circling back to what you said at the beginning maybe that's part of what you're going through too now it's just it's just more doctor stuff to take care of but it's just a right. part of life that we're at right now you yeah, know and you really do just you really think about what you have to keep it in perspective you have to right because surely at some point in your life you had a, as difficult a time you overcame it and think about how you manage that process and realize that you can, in fact, manage this process. And for some reason, that's very, it's very difficult to do. But for me, it's not. Right. Because I just, I remember everything that's happened in my life that has been so difficult. Right. And it just helps me maintain my sense of humor. Mark and I kept our sense of humor through the whole thing. We did not lose that. We didn't. And it made such a huge difference. We were laughing about the same stuff we laughed about before. It. We laughed about it all through the process of it. And that was awesome. Just awesome. That's good. That's good. I was just going to tell you that my guys have a lot of laughs about sex. We don't have a really good sense of humor about our prostate. We just yeah. <laughs> But the sex, you know, you ain't talking about the sex part of it, the external no, part. Of it. No, but when you get to the internal part of it, we we have very little. It's not funny, you know. We don't. Right. It, we you don't. Do. Tell, like, you don't hear a lot of guys telling prostate jokes. Hey, these two prostates entered a bar, and 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll make a lot of sex jokes. We'll make those till the, till the, till the, you know, the end of time or whatever. Cause that's all the outside. That's the only outside. Yeah. Once you start getting from the inside, we're like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I know. And you know what? We um, we talked about, we didn't talk about breasts as much either because the breast was a serious thing. And I was going to doctor's appointments and all that. But we've always had a big sense of humor about life in general. It sounds like y'all have a good sense of humor. Like, it sounds like this is just an extension of your already current philosophy. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. It is. It is. And like now I have to have surgery on my spine and oh yeah you said that beginning is that what you got that was coming up is that kind of what seemed maybe that's what you're really stressed about that sounds like that's pretty serious I oh mean, yeah i'm stressed about it because i've been in a lot of pain uh, i mean so much pain it's there are days when i'm just doubled over with my back and and i realize that i just can't go on that way because there's no ceasing in the pain it just doesn't go away now I used to power through it, as they say, do my exercise, hiking, all of that. But now it's gotten to the point where I have a lot of times where I can't power through it. And I realized that meant something. So I went to the neurosurgeon and um, both my chiropractor, whom I was seeing, and my regular doctor said, you've got to go see a neurosurgeon. You're in so much pain. We can't do anything for you. So I go, they do an MRI and they do, um, you know, x-rays and I go to see him two days ago and he says to me, I want to show you your MRI. <laughs> and I said, okay, show me the MRI. I want to know what the hell is going on. Well, somehow in all of this madness and all of these falls and everything, I basically destroyed one of the vertebrae. Nice. And it also affected four or two or two four vertebrae above it because they started, you know, falling into the space. Just created like a cascade. Oh, yeah. And, and they started crushing my nerves. But the space, here's what, here's what totally surprised me. And he was saying, look, I want to show you. It was, it's gone. It's disintegrated. Nice. Yeah, I so, have. So that's I what have, like, you. I have a black hole. So what are they? When is this? Have you got surgery scheduled already? Or well, they are going to schedule me right now. He's actually booked through the end of December. Yeah, we're trying to get there. We're trying to get there and before the introduction. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get my radiation done because I'm under on the other side of my deductible. This is the busy time of year for doctors. Everybody's on the other side of their deductible. Yeah. So. Yeah, so well, you're gonna have to wait till next year. Yeah. You think can you hold out to that that long? Uh, well, I'm I'm in serious pain, but they told me because I'm in so much pain, there is a surgeon surgery scheduler. She wasn't in this week, and she will call me next week. Meantime, I have to do a blood test and an EKG. Oh, uh, so that's all this, the coordination you're doing. You gotta yeah. get. The, so, so I'm doing that, and it'll be done next week. Yeah. And then she'll let me know, you know, cancellation or something. Yeah, your private cancellation when you get the time it. opens up. Yeah. So worry about that. I hope you're gonna keep us posted on how you're doing and everything. Please. Yeah, yeah. You have to do all and that. It sucks. It, yeah, it's causing. I will tell you, it is causing a great deal of pain. And I'm going, what now? Come on, you know, right. Diane. Broken feet, broken arms. You know. Well, I just, I'll just remind you what you said, though. You've been through so much already. You know, you'll make it through this, too. You know, I'll make it through this, too. And I think I'm and I can't. He even said he goes, you know, you need surgery, but it's your choice. If you don't want to do it, I don't totally understand. And that's when I said, I cannot live with this pain. I have to do this. Right. I can't have this degenerated. You know, vertebrae in my body that's killing me and making me unable to walk and unable to sit. Right, and, yeah. You don't have a quality of life kind of thing. It has no, to, I don't. Have, and it's it's even quality of life, me, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's even given me a scoliosis. That uh, yeah, you know the good idea. Us, I'm going, no, I'm doing it. So, and he said, well, I'm kind of booked through, you know, and I love this doctor, by the way. He is not like most doctors with this. 
and he's you know he comes in he's very dapper and he's all of that but he's extremely personable which i love you can talk to him he talks to oh, you this guy you don't send it doctors anymore well keep keep us posted on I how you're doing and all that how, how you're doing I'm, I'm getting closer i'm kind of running out of time by the way I just a little yeah, yeah. here but uh but but yeah keep us posted how you're doing there also todd's got <laughs> his cupid oh, we'll, we'll, we're probably hitting up soon it's cutting out time for the cupid fun run time of year, right? in february yeah so oh, we'll yes that again yes, so We'll we'll keep we'll we'll be hit we'll be hitting you up next time around we may be hitting you up for that because uh, it's well, in February. I, hit me up, hit me up for funds. I'm fine with that. I love donating to causes, so hit me up for that. Now, and he, will yeah. I run in few clothes? I don't know. I get really <laughs> yeah. If you know anybody, Don, was you gonna say ask if she knows anybody or no. yeah? Oh yeah, yeah. If you have to run around in their underwear in February, let us know. Yeah, right? you know, and honestly, guys, I have a qualified body. All this, <laughs> you exercise, do. Yeah. All this exercise has paid off. Believe exactly. Me. You look great. All so. life. But um, no, no, I have it, a very be qualified around, body. Yeah. Show those kids up. Show them up. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I got the figure. I really do. Well, yeah, well, well maybe, maybe you need to run around in your underwear in February. We'll keep you posted, right? Okay, very good, guys. That All right. Well, I actually, I actually have to need to run if that's okay with okay. you. But keep us posted on how you're doing with your backup. I'm sure it's okay. going to be okay. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. is it going to probably? You may have it before the end of the year, but right now it's like until next year. It's kind of looking like it might be uh, January. So it's posted. I'll power through. I'll power through. Power through. Keep yeah. Going. And if you know any good prostate jokes, let me know too. All right. right. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> all yeah, right. I'm going to need to hear about you too. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you posted. posted. I'll keep you posted. But thanks for the, uh, thanks for the heads up. I feel a little bit better about it now. You know, you have, you know, it's radiation. Yeah. You talk to somebody who's been through it. Yeah, so it feels better yeah. already. All right. Good. All right. Well, we're going to sign off if there's nothing else. Bye, Di. Bye, Di. Take Bye. care. Bye, Taryn, wherever you are. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>